Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, July 12th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center, your local NWS office, and your local officials for the best information for your location. Well, Barry is moving ever so slowly here in the average uh, long-term motion toward the northwest and the central Louisiana coastline where landfall somewhere in here is expected to occur. Uh, sometime tomorrow morning or maybe even early afternoon depending on the exact timing uh, but we have seen some wobbling in the motion uh, most of this coming from mesovortices one of which you can see here at the beginning of the loop rotating downward toward the deep convection we continue to have several of these rotating around a larger gyre that is uh, still rather wide and broad and uh, this is continuing to cause uh, wiggles in the track and also bouts of strengthening and then lulls in the organization of Barry as we continue to have convection only in the southern half and as these mesovortices rotate down into that area they become amplified by the convective updrafts which stretch vorticity and make them spin more uh, but then they ultimately have to come back out and rotate toward the north which causes the whole storm to wobble to the north and then they come back down which causes the storm to wobble back to the west and so we get this stair stepping motion uh, we're currently in the process of doing one of those westward stair steps and then the second stair step north will probably bring this inland uh, sometime tomorrow morning. You can see some of that on the recon data, which in these orange dots are showing some of the jumping around up to the north and then back to the west. Some of these fixes are probably catching the mesovortex more than the mean center. Uh, but either way, this is undergoing a mean northwestern motion toward the Louisiana coastline, which you can see here if that's hard to see. Uh, one other thing we can know from the recon data is that the strong side of the storm is still that southeast quadrant where the strongest southwesterly winds are happening of up to 65 miles per hour at a maximum out of the southwesterly direction, but these winds are rotating around gradually to the northeastern quadrant as well. We've had tropical storm force winds beginning to rake southeastern Louisiana today, and some of the oil platforms offshore have had hurricane force gusts uh, this afternoon at high elevation not quite down at the surface, uh, but still strong wind coming in toward uh, Louisiana. This will continue gradually overnight where we expect eventually this convective band to start rotating around gradually to the eastern side of the storm as well and bring some of this heavier rain on shore. Thankfully not so much rain yet uh, thanks to the continued dry air and northerly shear keeping this part of the storm dry, but that's probably going to change at some point near landfall time. If we look at the water vapor loop right now, the original dry air mass that took out the thunderstorm activity in the northern half of the storm is still there. It's just outlined more in here, and the cirrus outflow is currently obscuring this, but at the beginning part of the loop, you'll see the area of darker gray underneath the feathery cirrus, <clears throat> and that's where the original dry air mass is, and this is slowly getting rotated around to the western side of the storm. The air mass currently over the Gulf Coast, Mississippi and Alabama, is moist now, and so this is going to allow a resurgence of moisture being rotated northward by Barry's circulation, and this will eventually bring this moisture up onto the eastern side of the storm as it makes landfall and start to pump heavy rain and moisture into uh, Mississippi and Louisiana. And uh, this is expected to uh, generate a flooding concern as the storm is moving slowly and as it very gradually makes its way north-northwestward throughout the state of Louisiana, we are expecting a lot of rain near and east of the landfall point. Uh, however, uh, as far as wind impacts go at the coast, uh, we're not expecting a lot of intensification of Barry toward landfall. Gradual deepening has continued today. Uh, this large structure uh, with the large radius of maximum wind continues to make it difficult for the system to spin up an inner core. As these mesovortices come down into the convection, uh, you know, in some weaker systems, sometimes they can get stuck down here and regenerate a new average center of the storm that does get tighter and spin up, uh, but the system is too strong now and these mesovortices keep having to pop back up uh, into the northern semicircle. There's just too much angular momentum for them to get anchored down here. And so this is going to remain pretty broad, maybe get a little tighter tomorrow. Some of this convection may be a little closer to the center of the storm by morning, uh, but it's likely not going to have enough time uh, to become significantly stronger than it is now, but it could approach the technical definition of hurricane intensity. Right now, max winds are 65 miles an hour. We could be getting close to 75 miles per hour by tomorrow morning. 
Uh, we are going to continue to see wind shear as well, kind of limiting uh, the symmetry of Barry at the time of landfall on the GFS here early Saturday afternoon. This is a vortex average sounding showing again the steering layers that we were talking about a few days ago with regards to the track forecast. Southerly flow in the lower troposphere, northerly flow from the opposite direction in the mid troposphere. This is a shear of 25 to 30 knots on this model and you can see in the little thumbnail here uh, the green is the moisture field and it's still dry on the northwest side moist on the southeast side largely thanks to this shear and so these limiting factors will prevent explosive intensification of berry during its final 12 to 18 hours over water uh, but it is uh, going to gradually organize and we could see hurricane force winds immediately at the coast at the time of landfall likely just east of the center location. So we do still have hurricane warnings up in red here for parts of the coastline and although not explicitly shown here the hurricane center does forecast to be at uh, forecast Barry to be a hurricane intensity max winds of 75 miles an hour at the time of landfall tomorrow again sometime in the morning or early afternoon is expected and we have tropical storm force winds over a large area this orange uh, region shows the tropical storm force wind field winds of 40 miles per hour or greater and these can obviously still cause problems and power outages among other things and this large expansive area of strong wind will be doing that over parts of Louisiana and maybe even Mississippi uh, tomorrow you can see the slow track inland and all the rainfall expected near and east of the landfall point is still expected to be a potentially significant flooding concern and the danger of rising rivers uh, due to surge coming in from the southeast and rainfall swelling rivers even days after uh, the storm passes uh, will be a concern for inland flooding and that remains the primary danger from Barrie with uh, surge and wind impacts at the coast uh, but bigger dangers being um, inland flooding and uh, surge flooding in coastal zones uh, where that is possible. So we're really done forecasting Barry now, watching for landfall to occur and waiting to see where that primary rain band sets up. In general, near and east of the landfall point is where we're expecting all the rain, but the local details of exactly where the rain bands dump the most water, that's always hard to tell in advance. So stay tuned to your local officials and NWS office for the latest expectation and information regarding flooding potential in your area. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.